Okay, so let's look at this picture from last time. This is basically the world of discrete random variables. We talked about this concept called the PMF, these impulse functions, and then we integrated over these impulse functions to get the CDF, which is basically the cumulative probability of getting some value up to that point. Then we talked about the world of continuous random variables and defined this CDF, which in this case was this nice smooth slope if we were talking about a uniform random variable. What goes here? What is the corresponding thing for a PMF when we have a continuous random variable? Well, that's today's topic. It's called a PDF, probability density function. And this is the way that's most easy to define a random variable is by looking at its PDF, probability density function, PDF, okay? So remember that we kind of defined the uh, CDF as the integral of the PMF in the world of discrete random variables. And in the same way, the uh, PMF would be the derivative of the CDF, right, at a given point. So I know that when I have a stair-steppy type of CDF, the derivative is zero almost everywhere except for the places where it jumps up by a certain value, and that gives me the impulse function as the derivative, right? So same thing is true for uh, continuous, except we're going to give the PDF a slightly different notation. So um, in continuous random variables, the PDF is defined as a little f, which is the derivative of the capital F, which is the CDF. So this is a big F, and this is a little f. Okay, I know it's a little bit confusing, and I will try as hard as I can to make sure that it's clear whether this is a little f or a big F when I do my uh, lectures. Okay, so for example, what do we have in the um, case of a uniform random variable, right? So last time we talked about the uniform random variable. And that, if I'm being generic, between A and B, it was the CDF looked like, oops, not DX, just X, 0 up to point A, 1 after point B. In between, the CDF was uh, slope 1 over B minus A times X minus A. So this is when x is less than a, this is when I'm in the interval, and this is when I'm outside the interval, right? So we talked about this last time for specific numbers with a and b equal to 70 and 90, right? So what is the PDF of this going to be? Well, I'm going to take the derivative of this function, right? So the derivative is going to be flat here and flat here. It's going to be flat here with a different value. So let's just think about it. The uniform PDF will be 0 here, and it'll be 0 here. And in between, it will have the slope of whatever this was, was 1 minus b over a. Now, technically, what happens at a and b, we're a little bit cagey about, because in theory, those things have 0 probability. I'm just going to draw it like this, even though in theory it's not really defined what happens at A and B because the derivative doesn't exist there, right? It's not a continuous derivative. So this is fine for the purposes of our class and for probability, okay? And so how are we going to use the PDF? Well, the PDF is most commonly used to figure out probabilities uh, of this type. I basically integrate PDF over the interval I care about to find out what's the probability of being inside that interval, right? So for example, suppose I have a uniform random variable um, between 1 and 5, 
right? This is going to be the PDF. And now I ask, what is the probability that my random variable falls between 2 and 3? Well, I would label 2 and I would label 3. And it's taking the area under the PDF, right? That's going to be the integral from 2 to 3 of the PDF, which is 1 quarter dx, which is just equal to 1 quarter in this case. 1 quarter 3 minus 2, right? The reason all this works is by the fundamental theorem of calculus, right? This is like something that you learned way back in Calc 1, which is that this integral is written in a slightly different way like this. And then if I take the integral or the antiderivative, then this is that number at B minus that number at A. These are just the values of the CDF, right? And so why do we care about the PDF? Looking at the PDF gives us some sense of how much probability is going on in any particular interval, right? So we think about like a density. I had to switch to my red pen for a second because uh, my old one was crapping out. So let's suppose that I have a PDF that looks like this. Basically, if the PDF is high around a certain value, that means that values around there are more likely to get, right? Um, so I can see that this interval, if I were to integrate this amount under the PDF, would have higher probability than this integral interval over here, even though they may be the same width, right? So I can see that where the PDF is peaked, that's where the probability is, okay? Now, it's important to realize that the PDF is not the probability of getting x, right? So let me write that down to be concrete. So the PDF is not the probability of getting x. Right? We already know that the probability of any particular value is zero, right? Instead, it's basically kind of talking about how likely are things in the neighborhood of x, okay? And so, in fact, let me just write down a couple things, um, properties of the PDF. So one is that clearly I have to have you know, the PDF has to be positive everywhere, right? We talked about how I can't have any sort of negative probabilities. This comes from the fact that I already have something that is monotonically increasing, and so all of the derivatives, all the slopes of this thing have to be positive, right? I can't go down in the CDF, which means that the derivatives are all positive, right? And we know that since I top out at 1 in the CDF, that the integral over the entire real line has to add up to 1, right? I have to be somewhere, you know, I have to be somewhere on the real line, right? So there's a total probability mass of 1, and I integrate that going from minus infinity to infinity, right? So remember that, you know, the PDF can look like this, right? So uniform random variable Let's suppose I have a uniform random variable on the range one quarter to one half, okay? What does the PDF of that look like? Well, how wide is this interval? It's one quarter wide. That means that the PDF looks like this, right? So here's another kind of reason why the PDF is not the probability of getting any given value, because clearly I can't read off, you know, what's happening at 3 eighths and get a value of 4, right? We know the probabilities have to be between 0 and 1. But the area under this curve, the area under this rectangle, uh, integrates to 1. That's why everything still works out. So if I ask what is the probability of being, for example, in this interval, say between, uh, now I'm going to get myself in trouble here because this is what, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, uh, so say this is 4 sixteenths and this is 8 sixteenths, right? 
So let's suppose I want to know what's the probability of being between 5 sixteenths and 7 sixteenths, right? Then I would integrate from 5 sixteenths to 7 sixteenths of the PMF, which is 4, and I would get 4x evaluated at 7 sixteenths, 5 sixteenths, which is going to be 4 times 2 sixteenths, which is going to be half, which I know is the, the right thing because I'm half of the overall interval. So we're going to do a whole bunch of these integrals going forward, don't you worry. Uh, and so this is a good point to brush up on your integration. You can certainly use something like Wolfram Alpha to do quick integrals, but depending on where you're uh, taking this class, you may have to do some integrals by hand on an exam. So it's good to not get too uh, cocky about uh, using the computer all the time. Okay, so in the next lecture, I'm going to introduce a new continuous random variable called the exponential random variable. And after that, we're going to talk about the Gaussian random variable, which is like one of the most important random variables in engineering. Okay, see you next time.